Well, switching gears big time now. We've all heard about the end of the world in 2012. But could it be much, much sooner? Well, there's a whole lot of talk going all around the solar system that certain things we've seen recently should be taken as signs of something big being right around the corner. From the devastating earthquake in Japan to massive flooding in the U.S., the likes of which we've never seen, tornadoes, volcanoes, all kinds of natural disasters. And now we're expecting a comet, Comet Yellen in. It will be coming close to Earth, relatively speaking, in just a few short months, expected here on October 16th of this year. And joining us now for more is Brooks Agnew, host of X Squared Radio. Brooks is also the author of this book, Remembering the Future, the Physics and Soul of Time Travel. So, Brooks, I really want to talk to you about this because a lot of people are talking about this. If you look on the Internet, on YouTube, people seem to think that we should be concerned and worried and be preparing for October 16th. What's the big deal here? Why should we care about this? Well, that's a really good question. A lot of people are concerned about it. Uh, we've done a lot of research on Comet Ellen, and, and what we found is that there's a lot of missing data on this comet. NASA claims that it's a harmless little fuzzball of ice, won't come any closer than 22 million miles to Earth. Uh, others are saying that uh, they're getting uh, pictures of it, that it doesn't look like a comet, it doesn't act like a comet, it's coming in from an area that comets don't normally originate from. We have sort of a maelstrom in our galaxy where comets originate, and this one's not coming from that neighborhood. So the, there are a lot of things about this comet that don't make sense. Uh, couple that with the arrival of a very large asteroid. Uh, along around the same time, coming in from a different angle, and the launch of the new emergency alert system on the same day of the arrival of that asteroid. And you have some very strange coincidences that it seems the officials are not being upfront about. So what are you trying to say here, Brooks? I mean, you're saying that there are some dots to be connected here. Um, what are they, and what's the conclusion we should be led to? Well, it's a much bigger picture. As our solar system nears what we call the galactic plane of our galaxy, and we've seen a few television specials and a few movies and certainly some sensationalism out there in the press about it, but the, the facts cannot be denied that every 26,000 years our solar system arrives in this neighborhood, and it seems there is a historical record that some very cataclysmic things happen about this time. Now, we have been, you know, uh, put off by professionals saying, oh, there's nothing to worry about. Everything's going to be fine in 2013, just like it is right now. But those of us that have been watching the cosmological signs, geological signs, oceanographic signs, have been showing that there is the trend that the ancients said would happen. So when you're talking about some of these signs, Brooks, you're talking about some of the natural disasters we've seen, the major earthquakes, uh, hurricanes, flooding. I mean, is this what you're talking about? Yes, taken by themselves, they seem rather innocuous, but when you put them all together, it fits a very neat pattern of some other gravitational forces, some other higher frequencies entering our solar system that we haven't faced before, not in a long time. Let me tell you what, I've been looking around online and there are a lot of conspiracy theories out there about what this means, Comet Yellenin. Um, what do you think are, are some of the most viable, maybe one or two of the most viable theories out there in terms of what we should be aware of regarding this comet? Well, what we should be aware of is that the, the projections by JPL of its actual path uh, are, are highly estimated. There are a lot of forces working on this comet as it travels through our solar system from a very odd angle, and not all of them have been calculated. So we're kind of making a guess as to where this thing is going to end up. And I guess, you know, may not be good enough. As the Earth gets close enough to this and other bodies, like YU-55, this, this asteroid that's coming in, we're going to see some very near misses with our planet. And that's maybe not alarming, but when you look at the literally billions of dollars that governments are spending all over the world to build underground shelters and storage capacities, you wonder, if they know something, we don't. Well, why haven't I gotten anything in my mailbox about where the nearest underground shelter is to me? I mean, is this something that you think, um, you know, based on the fear that, that perhaps we should have, that people should be, you know, given notice of? Well, I think it's worth a raised eyebrow, and I'm sorry you didn't get your notice, but um, 
I think that uh, when we look at the press and we look at where governments are spending their money, for instance, recently Russia announced that they're building 5,000 more underground shelters. Why? Because they don't have enough shelters for all their people. Against what? And, of course, we've been building a lot of them here in this country, and that's also the subject of a lot of conspiracy theories. But if those kinds of shelters are being built, and we have, oh, I've just, just about forgot about this one, NASA's little uh, video um, warning that went out to all the family of NASA employees to get their food storage together, get their water storage together, have a, an escape plan uh, so that they can go from where they are to where their family is should the communication systems be knocked out. It's very real. In 1859, we had a solar storm that knocked out telegraph offices, caught them on fire, burned papers, electrocuted workers. Brooks, unfortunately, we are out of time, but certainly these are very interesting things. Uh, we appreciate you helping us make light of them. Brooks Agnew, host of X Squared Radio and author of Remembering the Future, the Physics and Soul of Time Travel. That's all the time we have. Thanks so much for watching.